Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're diving back into our series dedicated to South Asian Indian cuisine with a shot at yet another classic Indian dish, which is a sog paneer. Unlike the world of Chinese and Taiwanese cuisine that we more typically swim in, South Asian Indian cooking lives less in the world of high heat flash cooking and more commonly in the universe of slow cooking, braising, and low slow simmering heat. More specifically today, a sog paneer, as you might guess, prominently features the use of an Indian cottage cheese known as paneer. Paneer is a non-aged, non-melting soft cheese, sort of like a cheese curd for you Canadians out there. This means that since the cheese is made using an acid set process, it can withstand really any amount of searing or braising that we throw at it without any melting or crumbling, which is, for the lack of a better term, really cool. To pair with our cheese today, a sog paneer is also iconically made with a pureed spinach that is then sautéed with onions, chili, and cream to create a thick, saucy, and spicy green curry. Finally, because why not, I thought it was also way past time to take my very best shot at creating our very own garam masala spice blend, which is genuinely the true secret to amplifying all of your cooking. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so diving right in, we're kicking things off here with some aromatic veggies to pair with our spinach coming up. This is four cloves of crushed and minced garlic to start, followed by one inch or about one tablespoon of fine minced ginger that I'm setting aside for our saute later on. Then next, this is half of one medium white onion that I'm small dicing with the root end still attached for our nice even chop as always. The root end here is going to be really useful because it will hold the onion together as we chop. Next up are my chilies, which are going to be responsible for all of the heat in our dish today. These are some Thai chilies that I'm going with, although I've also seen widely varying chili uses in different iterations of this dish as well. Serranos or Fresnos seem to be fairly common, but I think what's most important though is that we want to be using green chilies so that we don't bias the color of our spinach later on. Next up, moving on to the main event, this is our paneer, about a pound's worth for our curry today. Paneer is very tricky to cut even with the sharpest of knives because of its dense nature, so I'm getting my knife nice and wet before slicing this into cubes. This will help the knife pass through the paneer without getting stuck to the cheese as I cut. Moving on to my garam masala. Now, for those unfamiliar, a garam masala is a spice blend, sort of like a curry powder or a Chinese five spice, meaning that depending on who made it, the contents of that blend can vary widely. So full disclosure, this is what we're using in our blend today, purely based on what I was able to find. What's most important though, is that since we're using whole spices, we can also toast and freshly grind these spices as well, which is going to maximize the potency and fragrance of our garam masala today. So going into my mixing bowl here is four star anise pods to start, followed by about eight cardamom pods and a single tablespoon of clove. Then next is a single stick of cinnamon, a teaspoon of fennel seed, and about one half of one nutmeg seed. Over on the stove, I've got my wok heating up over medium low heat. Then I'm adding my whole spices to dry toast for about five minutes until fragrant, giving some frequent agitation to make sure that these don't burn. Once your house is sufficiently filled with the smell of just everything that is good in the world, we're removing this from heat and then adding to a spice blender so that we can blitz it until a powder forms. A spice blender, by the way, is just a blender that you exclusively use for spices. Don't do this in your smoothie blender because your smoothies are going to come out tasting like garam masala for the next couple of months. Moving on, our freshly blended garam masala is going to appear in two different places today, the first of which is going to be the marinade to our paneer. I'm adding my cheese to a large mixing bowl, then tossing it in a tablespoon of garam masala, plus four tablespoons of melted ghee. For your own attempts, ghee is simply a form of clarified butter, so if you don't have this on hand, you can also simply use unsalted butter too. 
Moving on to our spinach. Now I've read varying opinions on whether you should or should not include the stems of your spinach leaves in a sog paneer. Hypothetically, we want to remove these stems because they can leave a bitter aftertaste to our curry later on. This however also means that we're about to sort through about a million leaves of spinach just to remove their stems. Now, did I consider skipping this step? Hell yes, of course I did, but then I also remembered that I host a cooking show and I also have a responsibility to you, the viewer to respectfully and accurately present this sog paneer in the manner with which the culture that we are paying homage to originally intended this dish to be made in. Did this step also take an extra 30 minutes that ultimately felt completely pointless? I mean, yeah, but here we are though. Anyway, we're blanching these in boiling water for about one minute, just long enough to get those leaves to wilt, then immediately shocking in cold water to get the cooking process to halt. Then next, we're about to see why I almost never use a food processor or stand mixer in videos. I'm adding my spinach to my food processor and then doing my very best to stay in frame while we blitz this into a puree. Ooh. Over on the stove, we're circling back to our paneer finally. I have my wok over medium heat once again, then I'm adding 4 tablespoons of peanut oil here and as always, long yao for that nice non-stick surface. Then next I'm adding in my paneer evenly across the surface of the wok, and we're gonna let this sear for two and a half minutes undisturbed until a nice crisp golden brown surface starts to form on our paneer. Then I'm flipping these and letting them go for another minute until our paneer is evenly browned. Left behind in our wok is gonna be this wonderful mixture of oil and melted butter, which is absolutely perfect for sauteing onions in. I'm adding these with a pinch of kosher salt to help move things along, then letting these go for 5 minutes with frequent agitation to avoid any burning until nice and browned. Then I'm shifting these to one side to clear some surface area in my wok, and then adding in my aromatic veggies next. Here's my garlic, ginger, and chilies going in for about 15 seconds until nice and fragrant. Then next, here's my pureed spinach going into the wok, plus about a quarter cup of water to help loosen things up. Moving on, I'm seasoning this with another tablespoon of my garam masala, followed by a quarter cup of heavy cream to give our curry that thick, luxurious, rich quality to it. Finally, I'm adding my paneer back to the wok, then letting it simmer over low heat for about 20 minutes before seasoning with kosher salt to taste. Then we're removing this all from heat, serving over rice, and we're ready to eat. Okay, so as far as curries go, this is honestly a pretty quick and simple one to put together here, since there really aren't a lot of ingredients going on, which I love. Our paneer is crisp and browned on its exterior, while also soft and tender once you bite into it, genuinely making it one of my absolute favorite proteins to add to a vegetarian dish. While at first glance these paneer cubes may look a lot like tofu, the higher fat content of our cheese allows for it to develop a much more even browning during our searing process, while also still retaining a lot more moisture as well. This means that although at first glance it might look very similar, you will never be able to achieve the same texture with firm tofu, simply because it doesn't have the same fat content. To pair with this, our pureed spinach curry is also rich and flavorful thanks to our garam masala and heavy cream additions as well. Also, while I still do and always will stand by shortcuts whenever they are possible, I will also say that it took an extra 5 minutes to make our garam masala from whole spices today and it completely changed the profile of our dish. The pre-ground spices that we more typically use are just a little bit flatter and a little bit more muted than the fresh ground stuff, which absolutely makes it worth the extra step in my book. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. For those who are new to the channel, this one is part of a new series that we've been doing that's dedicated to South Asian Indian cuisine. So definitely check out that series next if you haven't yet because there's a lot of these. For the Bay Area locals, the Wu Can Cook Fried Rice pop-up is back at Two Pitchers Brewing in Oakland this weekend. So come by and say hi then if you can. More about that at wukancook.com slash eats. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, be nice internetters, and I'll see you soon. Bye.